Hi everyone, welcome back to the Car Cave. We have a very exciting video today. Thanks to the generosity of Porsche of Riverside, we have this fantastic 2022 Porsche Cayman that we're gonna be reviewing today. We also have a Boxster over here that we might bring in later in the video. So if you're looking or you're in the market for a new Porsche or you have one, you want a nice place to get it serviced, I highly recommend Porsche of Riverside. Now, let's get started with this. I wanted to talk about what makes this a little bit more special than your base Cayman, because full disclosure, this is a Porsche Cayman T. Now the T stands for touring. So the Cayman and Boxster touring are intended to be a variant of the base car that's a bit more driver centric, a bit more enthusiast focused. So it's an enthusiast focused car of an enthusiast focused brand which is very exciting. And today we're gonna to talk through what makes it so great. Now, to start, it does share the same two liter turbocharged Boxer 4 engine as the base car. It produces 300 brake horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. It does zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds and it has two transmission options. You can do the standard six-speed manual or an automatic seven-speed PDK. Now, those are the same figures as the base car. Same engine, same transmission options, same performance. So what exactly are you getting for that extra bit of money? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. One thing to know about the Cayman and Boxer T is you get a few more bells and bobs as standard than you would on the base car. And one of those is the wheel package. So the Cayman and Boxer T come with two wheel options. You have these, which are the Carrera S wheels, uh, and you can also get the Carrera Sport wheels. Now these are the higher trim wheel selections on the base car, but uh, they come standard on the T. And they also come in this color, it's a platinum gray, which is specific to the Porsche Touring models. So you can't really get this color on any other car. As standard, you get a locking differential and you also get torque vectoring, which helps with stability when you're driving about. Now, on the Touring car, you get Sport Chrono Package as standard. Now, that's an optional extra on the base car, but you don't have to worry about checking that box because it already comes on the Touring. Now, the Sport Chrono Package gives you a variety of different things based on your transmission that you select. Now, a couple options are standard across both the PDK and the manual, and that includes an analog and a digital chronograph. It comes with this mode selection wheel on the steering wheel. You have PSM Sport to change your suspension dynamics. And they also come with drive, I believe it's drive line mounts, which let you alter the stiffness of the drivetrain based on the mode that you select. A couple of those options that do differ based on your transmission is if you have the standard six speed manual, you get an auto blip function in case one of your three legs is a little bit tired, the car will blip the throttle for you. So all you have to do is depress the clutch, put it in the gear that you like and remove the clutch. It will do all the complicated rev matching on your behalf. If you opt for the seven speed PDK automatic transmission, you get launch control. So you can get from one traffic light to the next a lot faster than everyone else. Now, another feature that you get with the automatic is you get a little button on your mode selection dial called I believe it's active response or rapid response or something response. And what it does is it gives you maximum power, spools up those turbos real nice and good so you can overtake when you need to. Now on the base car, you can opt in for PASM, which is Porsche Active Suspension Management. What that gives you is a couple of different options for your suspension settings. If you wanna make them a little stiffer, you have normal or sport. And then it also drops your overall ride height by about 10 millimeters. Now that's all well and good, but Porsche on the Touring gave you standard PASM Sport, which gives you the same two driving modes for your suspension setup, normal and sport, but instead of the 10 millimeter drop, you get a juicy 20 millimeters. Now, you also get some stiffer anti-roll bars, and this is standard on the Touring, but it's not even an option on the base car. If you want the PASM Sport, you have to go up a trim higher to the Boxster and Cayman S. A couple of other little options that you get with the Touring, you get as standard, you get the GT steering wheel, so there's no buttons or knobs to distract you 
from your driving experience. You get these fantastic painted roll hoops in the same platinum gray that you get on the wheels. So this is also unique to the Touring. You get gloss black exhaust pipes and you get these fantastic 718 designation contrast stitching on the headrest, all as standard. Now, in keeping with the mentality of having bare essentials, uh, you don't even get door handles in the Model T, kind of like in the GT3 RS. So you get these great fabric door pulls to save those crucial extra grams. Uh, even this infotainment system that you see, this marvelous piece of engineering, is an optional extra. On the base, base, base model of the Touring package, this isn't even here. It's just a cupboard for you to store things that you would take on a long journey. Now, Porsche will add this infotainment system back in for you free of charge, which is awfully nice of them, but uh, that's just less pure uh, according to Porsche's engineers. If you're really looking for a grand touring car, you don't really need music at all when you have the fantastic sound of that turbocharged Boxster 4. Now, on the subject of price, the Touring is more expensive than the base car, as you would expect. It's a $9,000 premium to get the Touring, but you do get $11,000 worth of options as standard on the Touring. So if you wanted to add all of these bits and bobs to the base car, it would cost you about $2,000 more. And remember, there are certain options that you simply can't have unless you opt in for the Touring. Now, the base touring starts at around $71,700, and then of course, that price goes up as you add different options that you like. So the question really becomes, is it worth it? And in my opinion, I really think that it is because the touring really is a driver-centric car from a brand that makes driver-centric cars. Now, I understand that it has the same horsepower and torque and performance figures as the base car, but for more expensive, but you don't have to go through building a car with all of these different options. You get everything kind of pre-built in this fantastic driving kit. And these Sport Tech seats that you see here are also standard. I may not have mentioned earlier, they're an optional extra on the base. And that 20 millimeters, you'd have to go up to an S4. And that's quite a lot more money. Now, for me, horsepower and speed and power and all those things, they're great and they're a lot of fun, but the actual enjoyment of driving a car is what I really look for. That's why I prefer to get the manual transmission. And in today's day and age, you can't get a lot of sports cars in manual anymore. So it's definitely not the fastest car in the world, but I'm not the kind of person to go after these horsepower numbers that every manufacturer seems to be chasing. Driving feel and driving pleasure are my focuses. And the Cayman and Boxster T, check those boxes off extremely well. I right, thank you everybody for watching. That's it for this video. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about the Cayman and Boxster Touring. Would you go for one? Would you go for the base car? Maybe what options you would get? Leave me a comment below. Uh, I'd love to start that discussion. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe if you liked what you saw and you'd like to see more and uh, do take care. Thank you.